Witches Live. Hey, you're a good dancing actor. How can you not be happy? Hey, I love the video. Have you seen the video for this song? Of course I've seen the video. It's awesome. Did you have moves when you were in college? Listen, this is my new pregame dance. I like it. Yeah. Is that your go-to move? <laughs> hey, welcome to the soccer show. Say Will Smith. Welcome to the soccer show. Sean Green here. You know who I am. I'm on the internet. I'm on Soccer Coach TV. And this is not just a great coach next to me, but absolutely great friend. Marcus DiBernardo, three-time national <laughs> champion coach of the year. What a guy this guy is right here. Marcus, how are you? I'm doing awesome, Greener. Thanks so much for having me on. This is awesome. Uh, boy, it's been a while since I saw you. Probably, what, half an hour maybe? Yeah, 30 seconds maybe. <laughs> <laughs> hey. We talk all the time, me and Marcus. Marcus was a former player of mine, great player, um, tough defender, leader on the field, went on to a coaching career from high school to college and one of the most well-known coaches here in the U.S. at the collegiate level, but also a phenomenal and pioneer in content creating. And he's a real thinker out the box and you're going to enjoy his company. Uh, we're going to collaborate together on a bunch of these shows and we're going to hope to entertain you, answer some questions and have some fun on the way, Marcus. Sounds good to me, Greener. I'm ready for the ride. Ready for the ride? <laughs> hey, so Marcus, first thing I want to do before we get started here is to um, is just to give a uh, – well, talk a little bit about my Facebook page, okay? Sean Green on Facebook. And I get literally uh, over, probably about 100 people a day trying to friend me on Facebook. And I'm at my limit of 5,000, so I did create another uh, two other pages – and the reason I'm saying this is that um, I don't want people to think that I don't want to friend them. You know what I'm saying? It's difficult, you know? And uh, so if you're trying to friend me and I'd love to be a friend, go over to Soccer Coach TV uh, Facebook page. I look for the, the other Sean Green page because all the content, every time I post something, Marcus, uh, I post it immediately to these other sites too. But I think it's important to let them know where you stand and not ignore them, right? This is explaining why I can't be your friend. I got it now, Greener. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> I'm going to have to delete somebody. I'll, I'll go through my <laughs> list to, to get you on there, Marcus. You know, So, Marcus, um, this show is not your normal soccer show, right? You got it. What, what, tell the audience, what do you think what, what our goal is of doing this podcast? You know, for me, it's just it's a nice informal way just to talk to coaches and hopefully we can get some questions and interact. And, you know, I'm not a guy who likes to overcomplicate things. So I like to nice straight talk. And, and for me, that's that that's a nice platform. Yeah. I mean, it's trying to get, you know, stand out from the crowd. Right. Because there's so many podcasts out there for soccer and for coaching and, you know, all different topics. So what we would like to do is to give you a little bit maybe a little bit of a different perspective on things and a different look at things. So try and change the lens a little bit and uh, not fall into that trap of all looking through the same lens in football. And we try to look at areas that uh, might be really discussed or talked about. I'll just give you a different angle on, on, on any topic that you wish. We encourage you to, to post some messages up here while we're chatting. We'll answer your questions. We can get to them, um, but appreciate you coming in and watching, um, watching our show. So, Marcus, uh, before I start, I want to get something uh, to you. It was very important. Uh, I got it, received it today from NASA. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I'm a big science fan, right? Yeah. And it just recently, you know, uh, landed on Mars. You know that. But on the way into Mars, do you remember when you played for me and um, against North Carolina when we were losing 1-0 and you took that PK, penalty kick? Do you remember that? I think I remember that vaguely. The one that went way over the crossbar? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I think I remember. Well, listen, so I know you love that soccer ball. So NASA just sent me the video this morning. <laughs> Great news, Marcus. I know you're going to be really happy. I'm just going to show you the video. Hello, Hello soccer, soccer Coach, coach TV. TV. <laughs> this is NASA calling from Cape Canaveral. 
We have reason to believe that we've located a lost soccer ball that Mom Steve Bonato tried to attempt one of the penalty kicks. If you'd like the ball return, we can send up another mission because it's going really fast and we'd like him to have it as a souvenir. Just call us at any time. Thank you. Roger. Over. You're dating, you're dating us, Greener. That ball said 1978 on it. So. How nice was that of NASA to you know, try and get you that ball back? But yeah. It was a good effort, though. We don't take any more penalty kicks. <laughs> All right, Marcus, listen. We've got a uh, from one of the fans. He's a fan of both Soccer Coach TV and of you. His his name is Jeremy Wood. And he sent in and he, uh, a message was, my two favorite YouTube coaches and resources. Thank you, Jeremy. That means a lot to us. That's why we do what we do. As the game is becoming more regimented, especially at the higher levels, how do you perceive we continue installing creativity and individuality in youth players while also steering them towards long-term success in the sport? Marcus, I'm going to let you have a take a stab at that one. I, I mean, Jeremy, thank you so much. And, you know, it's a really, it's a really great um, question. And some of the things that come to mind are, especially in youth development, are the coaches creating an environment where – players are free to explore and figure out solutions on their own where they're maybe just guided or pushed a little bit by the coach or are we setting up training situations for younger players where the coach is the one who comes up with all the solutions and doesn't really um, allow the players to make mistakes and is constantly calling things mistakes right and so th those things are, are really, really important. You could see here coaches playing this, this uh, video of, of a field. And for me, that field is the teacher. There, no, no bounce of that ball is ever the same. They have to take up unique body positions. They have to figure out solutions. Uh, this is another great example. And those things are invaluable. So what I would say is that – at the pro level, it could be a little bit different because, you, you know, the, the players are going to be put in a certain game model and they really have to stick to that game model. And game models in itself can be quite constricting. I'll give you an example, though. Like for younger players, we don't know what they're capable of and we need to we need them to give them time to explore what they're capable of. So you don't really want to 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 constrain that. Um, but if you look at Lionel Messi. How are you supposed to put Lionel Messi in a, in, in a game model? Because you don't know what he's capable of. You're not going to tell Lionel Messi, if you get the ball here, this is what you need to do. You really can't say that because the guy's so talented, he might break every rule in the game. So for me, again, it's really that relationship between the environment and the player and then the coach can help create that environment and be part of that environment. But for me, it's all about flexibility and freedom to make their own decisions in training. And obviously, we know the, where this is going. It can't be a results-oriented type of thing when you're coaching you know, U14 and down. Maybe once you get to U16, you start to look at winning the game a little bit more. But below 16 years old, your focus cannot be – on winning the game, because if you're going to focus on winning the game, you know, that could really take away the player's chance to express themselves and develop these skill sets and these creative thinking. What do you think about that, Greener? Well, do you think we coach too much? Yeah, I think we coach way too much, uh, way too much. That's why I say I want the players to be learning from the environment and we can manipulate the environment. We can make it game related, game game representative. But I think coaches insert themselves way too much. I think there was a quote by by Johan Cruyff, and he was teaching Pep Guardiola, and he said, "Listen, don't insert yourself so much. Take the ball to the side and go sit on it and go watch more." And I, I that really resonates with me. Well, you look at basketball players. How a lot of these basketball players um, started their careers right, just playing in the streets. Same as soccer. Mm -hmm. yeah, no teachers. They're just one-on-one -on, -one on small games, small-sided games. And it, 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 they had to figure out the solutions on their own. There was no coaches around. But let me tell you this. You know, there's two ways of looking at it. One is that you say that, yeah, let's give kids creative freedom, right? Just let them play and figure it out on their own, okay? 
Yeah. That's one aspect of it. But my contention is this. If I had a 14-year-old kid and he was in the street playing on his own or with his buddies, different levels of ability, obviously, habits, good habits in that environment. Um, I could make him a better player in two weeks if I had him one-on-one -on -one than he could ever learn in two weeks just playing pickup games. I, I would say there's a lot of variables in that. One is who you play in the pickup games against. If you're playing against really skilled players who you can really learn from, you're going to get better. If you're playing against kids who are far below your level and you're not, you're not going to learn as much. I would also say that you need all sorts of environments. If if absolute freedom is always given to players, they're always going to they're they're always going to go back and try the solutions that they're comfortable with. You need to have constraints and restrictions in training to force players to perceive differently, take away some of the tools they're used to solving the problems with and force them to solve those problems with different tools. And that really is let's be honest, look at the field. If you and I had to go play on that field right now, yeah, for sure. We're going to develop a different skill set and not just a different skill set, a different tactical skill set as well, because we can't survive you it's know, a on that field. Totally different environment. Totally different environment. You're right. Hey, what a great question that was, Jeremy. Thank you so much. We hope we answered your question somewhat. Um, you know, throughout the show, I'm going to throw a few, a few little, uh, little tidbits about Marcus. Uh, you know, he's going to be embarrassing. I'm sure. He's just, I mean, you know, Mark, I'm just going to throw you. You know, you know, you, you know, he won three championships, right? Yeah. It's unbelievable. That, Marcus, that, Marcus, that, Marcus, that, most people dream a dream, dream of just one championship. I've got some other really interesting tips about you. I'm going to share uh, with our audience, Marcus. I want to move on a little bit because we're going to limit this show to half an hour. You know, you know, we could do an hour and a half if we, you know, but it just gets a bit boring, right? <laughs> and uh, but the next topic I want to talk about this week on Facebook. Um, I put a video on Facebook and it kind of went viral. It was like, I don't I wouldn't say viral, but 4,000 views in it within a day and a half. And the, the video I put on was one of the practices I had was a nightmare. It was an epic fail, you know? And basically the problem was I was driving to practice in the car. I had these idea in mind, what I wanted to do on this drill. And it just didn't work out. And I abandoned it straight away, aborted it and uh, set the alarms off and just moved on. I want you to want to get your take on this, okay? And what should coaches do in this situation? I'm just going to show you how bad I was in the uh, – <laughs> do I have it with – do I have it? Was it this one? I think it was. Here, let's go. We're going to rotate around every 45 seconds, and we're going to move on to a big game, okay? All right? It's got to be quality. See how many passes you can get in 45 seconds and see how you compare with the next group, all right? Hey. <clears throat> Yeah, so we start right off with. I couldn't even remember what, what I was. Play the ball, all in, about. Play the ball into him. Off you go. We'll start here. You've got to cut one line off. All right. How many passes can you get? Go quickly. Yeah, stop. Good. He's cutting the line off. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so, sorry. Come back here. You know what? Guys, scrap that. We're not going to do that. It's not the way I want it to work. <laughs> So the point, is, awesome. the point is, even if you're absolutely a super legend like me, right, <laughs> you can still make mistakes. So, you know, people don't think I don't make mistakes. I make mistakes every practice and I just I'm just good at editing them out. You know what I mean? <laughs> Listen, you know what you know what that reminds me, though, of Greener is a lot of times like you and I put a lot of content out there, a lot of exercises. It doesn't mean that the exercise is going to work in your environment. So as coaches, one of the biggest skills that we can have is taking what we see, and if it doesn't work with your players and your environment, you got to instantly figure out how can you change this thing to make it work for your players. Right. I mean, and plus you got to put your ego aside, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Luckily, I was born without one of those, so I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing: what surprised me when, when I put it on there because I just wanted people to know, especially young coaches, that look at. Hey, we all make mistakes, man. Don't beat yourself up, you know. Don't let it don't let it uh, damage your, your confidence. Don't let it shake your confidence, the young coach, if you go in and you have a shitty practice session. We all do. We all have crappy for many reasons. Could could be, hey, Marcus, you didn't prepare well, right? Yeah. That's often the case. Sure. Other cases that maybe you've overprepared. Maybe the fact that what you're doing with the kids is just too difficult physically 
uh, mentally for the kids to do. You agree? Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. Do you ever get that with college players, Marcus? Yeah, I mean, we have a wide range of guys in our program because we actually have three different programs in in one. So, so it, it is interesting. It's it's really interesting. What I do in one session doesn't work in the next session sometimes, and and it, it's it's fun for me. It gives you it gives the coach another toolbox. But here's what I would say though, Greener is even for like the coaches, some of us admire the most, like Guardiola and these guys. Have you ever noticed like they could get it wrong, like drastically wrong tactically in one game, and you're yeah. like, how could he do that? He's the greatest coach. Right. It happens to everybody. It happens to everybody, for sure. Hey, Marcus, look who's in the house. Hey, hey Felipe, how's you? Uh, thanks for coming in and watching the show. He runs a great soccer group. Oh, awesome group, isn't it? The yeah. Canadian Coaches Network. Yes, huge Benfica fan, too. Yeah. Did, did they play soccer in Benfica? Hey, listen, I got to meet their captain last year. Super, super nice guy. All right. Hey, look who else is in the house. She's my biggest fan. My sister. <laughs> hey, Kathleen, love you. Love you, sis. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate that. She's in Newcastle, England right now. We've got a good friend of mine, Michael Carlino. He's yeah. a great guy, too. I'm going to go and visit him, too, as soon as this pandemic's over. And we have um, Maui. And I think, yes. Maui. He's a big, big that, fan. Big fan that, of Soccer Coach TV. Nice. See, it's good you chose to pronounce his first name because his last name was long. That's a cool name, though, isn't it? I'd love to have his name awesome. like that. Ryan Hodgson. Hey, Ryan, how are you, buddy? Thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate it. He says, absolutely not, Marcus. Brands need to be built through winning first mentality. Well, we're going to talk about that, a winning mentality. I don't know what he's referring to there. He's probably referring to the fact that I said that, you know, a U12 team doesn't have to get results. And I, you know, I, I, Ryan, I respect everybody's opinion, and I, I think that's great. But for my personal belief is my U12 team that, that I coached last year, yeah, of course we wanted to win the game, but I still want to play a certain type of football. And if, if we end up conceding a few more goals for the kids to learn a little bit more, I'm okay with that. Let's talk about, about win in a second. And for, for, for people who are tuned in right now, we really appreciate it because we know your time is valuable and important to spend it with us. We feel very, very grateful. But we'll get back to you in, in a few minutes. And uh, you're not ignored. We're looking at the people who are uh, uh, tuned in here. Um, Marcus, about winning, okay? You always hear everything's built around winning, the culture of winning games. You're preparing for games every Saturday, that dialogue in the locker room, etc. I really, as a coach, hear the word winning in training. Oh, there's an outside reference to the oh, – yeah, Hey, we've got to win on Saturday. We've got to, but winning the drills, winning the practice, winning the exercise, and and training, and and the little things are the biggest things on a Saturday. And I'm just going to play this little video. It's about 30 seconds long, and this is what I was talking to with a team the other day. Big game, big game coming up. Big season coming up. And I said to my group before and here, what does this mean to you in training? These games in training, it was 8v8, 9v9, 5v5, 3v3. They have to mean something to you. You've got to win the small games. You've got to win these games in practice. They've got to mean something. Because if you can't win this game, you're not going to win the big games when the pressure's really on. What do you think? Yeah, listen, for me, when I go outside and play with my six-year-old son, does he want to win? Yeah, he wants to win. And I honestly, that, that's, a, that's the way it should be. I think every player should want to win every single thing. This is why, but here's the thing, though. For me, winning is just a byproduct of doing things well. If you're not there and you're not trying to win every game, why are you there? So well, well, but let me say this, though. I mean, so at what point, obviously, development is an critically important okay but at what point do you change the emphasis from development into winning well that, that's what i'm saying like i i gave a random 16 year old type of uh cut off there because i think at 16 now we're going to develop them into the u18s and then if they're going to have a career then we need to get them in the right direction of how are we really going to start to win but before that, listen, if my team wants to play out of the back and, and I really think it's important them for to get that skill set, but we're going to give up a few more goals. Honestly, I, I, 
it is what it is. I'm not going to have those kids hit the ball 40 yards down the field every time and just say, forget it. We need to win every game at the U12 level. Yeah, but let's get real, though. I mean, you see it all the time. Everybody from, you know, could be seven, eight, nine, ten years of age. They all want to win. You see, the first I, thing, I agree. I see, I see it on Facebook. I see posts. Hey, my team won the championship 6 0 today or 7 0. And it's a freaking eight year old team, you know, and they're holding trophies up like it's, the, 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 you know, we might say that. Winning doesn't matter, but you know the parents on the sideline. These coaches get a friend of mine up in Vermont, Scott. I'm going to go up and coach his team up there, and his team lost 18-1 the other day. 18-1. Yeah. Way out, he said to the coach, you know, not cool. You know, yes. he, he said, why didn't you just, you know, keep the ball after five goals? He didn't have to, you know, embarrass us in that manner. The coach just shrugged his shoulders and said, hey, how do you stop kids shooting a goal? You know? You yeah, I mean, I, I, mean I, you know, it's really funny. I actually think it's more insulting to just keep the ball and not shoot than it is to shoot. Just play the game. Like, I'm not one of these guys who actually gets offended by, you know, if it's so mismatched, maybe you're in the wrong league. But I, I don't I don't get offended by kids. So you're, you're telling me you'd blow out a team 19-0? Yeah. Yeah. And, and he, I know that's controversial, right? But here's the reason I say it, Greener. I've actually been a player for this really terrible men's team, right? And we were getting killed. And when the guys started to just keep the ball on purpose and kind of taunt us a little bit, and like, I'd rather you just go score goals. Like, just go score against us. What's the, what's the problem here? And so I, I think we're a little too defensive about this. Like, oh, my God, we got blown out by 20 goals. I mean, all right, whatever. In basketball, you, teams could win 102 to 50. Yeah, it looks a little better, but no one's saying, oh, my God, how could you beat him 102 to 50? Like, that's not even part of the conversation. It's only in soccer do we have this conversation. Okay, let's move on. Gonzalo, how are you, my friend? Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Every country has a different reality when it comes to the amount of coaching needed. That's a good point. Here in the U.S., because the majority of kids don't experience in free play enough, especially at a young age, coaches do have to step aside and let them go at it more often. It's true, right? That's exactly what we're talking about. So what I would say is in the U.S., right, if you're going to have two practices a week, it really needs to have be game-based because for me, game-based training where players are making real decisions in, in game-based training environments, where else are they going to get that? Because they're not playing pickup games. So their time with you shouldn't be dribbling in between cones. And that's my opinion. Okay. I'm getting fired up here, Greener. This is awesome. I uh, don't want this. So <laughs> Ryan, Ryan Hodgson, um, good for you for showing that, mate. How many times do you self-reflect as a coach? Yeah, this is this is an interesting one, right? Do you, on a weekly basis, evaluate yourself, Marcus? Um, you know, th these are these these are also difficult conversations sometimes. Like I, I don't know. It, it, it these are I find a lot of benefit for me to really talk to coaches. I love to talk to coaches who make me think and make me rethink what I'm doing. I, I put high value in that. And I also do value talking to players, but I have to make sure that the players are not altering, you know, have some motivation like this guy sucks. He never plays me. I'm going to tell him his practices are crap. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I try to balance it out. And I, I think it's, you know, I've said this many times on my show before. It's a, I think it's critical, not a high priority for everybody to have a mentor. Yeah, you know, there's somebody who can be really honest and candid with you. I mean, you can reflect on yourself, but if you got you know delusional, it's not going to help you. You know, if you think you're a Premier League coach and you've only been coaching two months and you think you're going to win the World Cup, whatever. But you know, you need somebody who's realistic and say, "Hey, these these are parts of your coaching skill set which are great, but you need to work on this and you need to work on that." And coming from somebody who's had experience, that helps a lot. I agree a hundred percent. The one thing I would say is this is that this is, a, this is a game, this is a profession where there's not one solution. There's not one linear path to create a great team or a great player. Well, so, they, well I'll say that. The, the USSF, USSF thinks so. And then and the United Coaching Association, they all have that one style. There's, there's, there's not really um, much flexibility in, 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 in their programs. But, you know, here's what I would say. Do, does that matter to me? I don't, th those aren't my mentors. So what I'm saying is whenever I speak to people about coaching, I just give them what I think 
and I and I, I always you know shape it around. It's up to you to take what you value from what I'm telling you. And I'm not telling you my way is right or the only way. And and I do have a bit of an issue with people saying this is the way you have to do it because they don't know your environment and they just it's it's very hard. Agreed. And you know, it's uh, you've got to be comfortable in, in your own style and develop your own style and be your own coach. Don't copy off anybody else. Good question. So hi Tico. Very good friend. You know Tico Marcus. Yes. yes. That, Puerto Rico, that, right? Down in Puerto Rico, man. I was yes. chatting. I was chatting with him on video yesterday. You want to see? He lives about two hundred yards from the ocean. It's beautiful. He opens the doors. The sunshine down there. Listen, course, Jack, he, I he makes it my driveway me. ten times in the last five days. So I'm very jealous of of, of Tico right now. Okay, we got another quick fact that you didn't know about Marcus. <laughs> and Marcus is such a talented, talented guy. <laughs> and uh, he's so diverse. Let me just pull that up. I'm going to get you back for these, by the way. Oh, these are great, son. These, I'm, I'm like your campaign manager right here. Oh Another God. talented fact you didn't know about Marcus was uh, he was voted the sexiest soccer coach TV <laughs> sexiest coach of the year. Well, you know what? I, How many years? Was that three years in a row, right? Listen, when you're the only one running for that, you tend to win it quite a lot. <laughs> All right. So, Marcus, uh, let me just we, – we've got about 10 minutes, I think, uh, even less than that. If we're going to stay online, we've got about three three or four minutes left. I just want to give a couple of shout-outs, okay? Awesome. I, I think it's important we recognize um, some of the people, you know, who, who support Soccer Coach TV and support your program. So this week, what I saw on – I got a I got a, a video from McLeod McGara. Mag 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 He's the coach out there in Kenya, Nairobi, Kenya, hmm. and he writes to me nearly every day. I get a lot of emails, literally every day, texts and emails, easily over 150, nearly 200 a day. It's hard to keep up That's with. That's amazing. And, um, no, I, it, it's tough, and I feel bad when I when I can't. But he sent me a video of um, of his game last weekend, right? He was telling me how excited he was about the game, and he sent me the video. Marcus, you got to see this goal. And just talking about – what you were saying about the different environments, the different cultures, right? Yeah. Uh, look at the people here, the, the joy that they yeah. got from this goal. And it's a cracking goal. The goal is scored by Oliver Menge, M-E-N-G-E. -E. He's 22 years old. He's playing for Mat Matesa Villa under 23s against the Young Lions FC. Game's getting near the end, and he scores this cracking goal. Let's take a look. <laughs> uh, okay. And look at the field. Look at the field. Look at the field. Every coach in the world is going to tell you, don't shoot the ball from that angle. Right. <laughs> that is just great. Hey, I got to tell you, though, Marcus, that big ups for that young man, right? Big yeah, ups yeah, for him. Cool. yeah. cracking awesome. goal. Now, listen, if you saw that on, you know, EPL on a Saturday morning and it was uh, Man United scoring it, they'd be replaying it all day. Don't you find that some of the greatest goals or moves that you've ever seen are in your on practice sessions, not oh not on TV. Yeah, you actually, with the culture of kids you've had, I'm sure you've seen that. Oh yeah, uh, uh, amazing stuff. Sometimes me and the other coaches just sit back and practice and elbow each other and say, "Did you just see what just happened there?" It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Hey, another friend of mine online, Marcus Peter Nash. He's a great coach, selfless coach, and he coaches a club in uh, in Nairobi, in Kenya. Mm. And uh, he sent me this picture yesterday. He was all excited. Just The guys had just finished soccer practice. And he sends me pictures all the time. I wanted to share that. And you just look at that picture. You look at, you've got a spare tire in the background there, a young lad holding it. You've got one cone, some, you know, some looks like some jump sticks or whatever. Yeah. The, the kids, the, the passion for soccer, the love of soccer, man, how global it is. And yeah. you've got Peter, who's really promoting the game out there. I told him I'd give him a shout out. He's in desperate need of equipment for his club. You know, they don't, they don't have many balls or even soccer equipment. If anybody is um, willing to send stuff out to Peter's club there, 
in Nairobi. I know he appreciate the support. Instead of throwing that old stuff away, the old balls or old shoes, mm -hmm. maybe you could put them in the mail to Peter, ship them out. I will post that on my Facebook page um, or check the video uh, after it goes permanently on, uh, online. You can get his uh, email address. Or even contact me and I can forward the stuff to you. Uh, but any help uh, that you can give Peter, greatly appreciated. Another, wow. fact, uh, another fact about Marcus. <laughs> It's a true story. <laughs> Definitely, it's a true story. He never wears pants when he's doing podcasts. <laughs> Let's see who we got up here, Marcus, on the online. And we got two minutes left. And I'm sorry if we didn't get to everybody. Let's have a look here. Green, that's crazy. Remember that guy at CNN got fired for that, you know? <laughs> for what? Not wearing pants? Yeah. It says, amazing pitch. There you learn ball handling at its best. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, did you see that drill on the online on Facebook? I put it on my page. Filippo put it out. I shared it from Filippo, um, Filippi, and um, it was, I think, a Korean or Oriental team coach. They were using rugby balls to dribble around the cones. Did you see that? It's awesome. It's a really it's good a idea. Creative, but you yeah. know what? Why not use tennis balls? Right. Listen, there is. Why there's not use balloons? Balloons, tennis balls, rugby balls. Yeah. Again, all, all that stuff, you know, is is unique touches on the ball in different ways. I, I just give you one example. When Ronaldinho played beach soccer, he would say, you couldn't understand the touches that I took at Barcelona because I learned those touches on the beach. And that's kind of what you're saying. I, I really like that. Right. Well, there's a few things I didn't get to today. We'll get to on our next show. Uh, we're going to try and keep this show to about half an hour, which it is right now, Marcus, as you know. I know and we could go on and on and on. Listen, for everybody who we didn't get to, who who sent us a message, I will personally message you after the show or later on today or tomorrow. And uh, Kenny Kincaid, I played with him up the Bud Man up there in New Hampshire. Great guy. Super, super guy. But uh, so, Marcus, it is about that time. Hold on yes. one second. You got anything to say at the, at the end, Marcus, to the people who support you, to your fans who – who reach out to you every day and oh no listen I, I it was funny the other day on my birthday i got a call from nigeria from a coach who just wanted to wish me happy birthday and you know that's that's what you're talking about the kind of shared love in this world in the coaching and the soccer community that's what this is all about and um you know that it, it's it's a special thing and i just want to thank everybody it's really really great well thanks marcus good show son and uh send us any questions any topics of discussion I think I've got a really good idea for next week, something different. And for that, Marcus. Greener, thanks so much. <laughs> All right, I'm out. You're out of here. I'm out. Marcus, <laughs> I'll see you later, my friend. I love you, brother. I hey, love guys, you. we'll see you again pretty soon. With that said, here we go. Soccer Coach TV, where coaches live.